In this video, we're going to solve a related rate problem um, or a related rate of change problem. Most calculus books will just call this a related rate problem. This is going to be an application of derivatives. All right, so before we get to our first problem, let's look at the strategy for solving a related rate problem. So step one, we're going to make a sketch of the situation. I guess I could put here, if possible. There are times when you can't make a sketch just because of the problem. But in general, we do try to make a sketch of the situation to kind of get a visual of what's going on. Step two, we're going to write an equation that has all the quantities in the problem. So sometimes this is kind of a tough step because you have this problem and you've got to come up with an equation that relates all the variables to the problem. And sometimes there's more than one choice of an equation that could possibly be used, but usually there's only one that has everything that we have that we want in it. So we'll talk about that when we get to our examples. Okay, step three, we're going to implicit, implicitly differentiate the equation. Now, I wrote here, usually with respect to time. Now, we haven't talked about this too much, but um, when we take a derivative, we're finding the instantaneous rate of change of a function with respect to some variable. Now, we usually do this with respect to x, and that's because that's what we've been doing things. We have x and y, so x is always down here, y is up here. And, for example, when we first defined slope, it had to do with, you know, how's y changing with respect to x? But it doesn't have to be with respect to x. It can actually be with respect to any variable. Um, and in this case, with these related rate of change problems, it's with respect to time. Okay, and then the last part is we're going to substitute all known values and solve. So if you do these two steps, this problem, this part here tends to not be um, the challenging part. All right, so let's look at our first example. And I pre-wrote it out. So in this example, a ladder 13 feet long is leaning against a house. The base of the ladder is pulled away from the house wall at a rate of 5 feet per second. How fast is the top of the ladder moving down the wall when the ladder is 12 feet away from the wall? Okay, so we have this problem here, and it's a related rate of change problem. And let's go through our strategy. So step one is we want to make a sketch of the situation. So this one's not too bad. So let's see here. So here's our house. So that's our house. And here's our ladder. And it's leaning against the wall. Okay? Now the ladder itself is 13 feet long. Okay. And we also know that we're pulling this away from the base. So you have to imagine that, I don't know, maybe it started up here, but as we pull this ladder, it's kind of sliding down. But this part here is always staying against the wall. So as you're pulling it out, this is just sliding down the wall. Alright, and we want to know how fast the top of the ladder is moving down when this is 12 feet away. Okay, so there's a nice sketch. Okay, step two is we want to write an equation that has all the quantities in the problem. And sometimes this is easy, sometimes it's not so easy. This one's not so bad because when we think of a building, you know, usually we can assume that that's a right angle. And if this is a right angle, when you look at the side of the house, the ground, and the ladder, we end up with a right triangle. 
And when you have a right triangle, you have lots of options. You have the Pythagorean theorem, you have some trig functions, so those are all good. And um, so you do have to choose the right one. Now in this case, because we have a side, a side, we'll be able to get this side, and it seems like everything is based on sides, um, it appears that the Pythagorean theorem would probably be the best choice. So let's go ahead and write that out. x squared plus y squared equals, and I ended up calling that an L, so we'll just say L squared. So we have x squared plus y squared equals l squared, and the reason we chose this equation for the right triangle is because it appears that we're going to be working with the sides, and this relates the sides. All right, now we're going to implicitly differentiate the equation. And in this time, and, and we are going to do it with respect to t. I don't think I gave you any problems where you don't do it with respect to t. So let's go ahead and implicitly differentiate this. So the derivative of x squared is 2x dx dt. The derivative of y squared is 2y dy dt. And the derivative of l squared is 2l dl dt. So when you, when you take the derivative with respect to time and you have all these variables, um, like when we did implicit differentiation, we always ended up with these dx dx's and we could kind of cancel them out and we didn't even write them down. <clears throat> but in related rate of change problems, you pretty much have to write everything down. Or take the, you know, do the dx dt, dy dt, and dl dt. You can't, you know, nothing's going to cancel out. Okay, so now that we have all this information here, we gotta figure out if we have values for all of this. So let's go through. Let's see, we have x. So I guess we first should label that this was x, this is y, and that's l. We better be clear about that. So x, we know x is 12 feet. We know dx dt. Well, dx dt is the rate that the ladder is being pulled out. So the ladder is being pulled out at 5 feet per second. So I'd set that up here. Okay, good. Right, let's see, we have y. What is y? Actually, we don't have y right now. So we got to figure out y. In this case, we'll use the Pythagorean theorem. So we have x squared plus y squared equals l squared. So we have 12 squared plus y squared equals 13 squared. So we have 144 plus y squared equals 169. So y squared is 25, and y is plus or minus 5. Now, of course, 5 makes sense, so we're going to use that. Now, some of you might have recognized, oh, hey, this is going to be a 5, 12, 13, which is fine. Um, but if you didn't, then just use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so now let's look at dy dt. What is dy dt? Um, that's the rate that the ladder is being pulled down. And that we don't know, so that's our question. Okay, what is L? L was 13 feet, we were given that. And then, what is dl dt? Well, dl dt is the rate that the length of the ladder is changing. So notice that dx dt was the rate that the ladder was moving this way or this way. dy dt is the rate that the ladder is moving up and down. So dl dt is the rate that the length of the ladder is changing. Well, in this case, it doesn't say that the ladder is, you know, 
getting bigger or shrinking, it stays the same at 13 feet. So dl dt is actually going to be 0 feet per second. Okay, so let's take our equation. It was what? 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals 2l dl dt. And let's put in all the information we have. So we have 2 times 12 times dx dt is 5 plus 2 times 5. And in dy dt, that's what we're looking for, equals 2 times 13 times 0. Okay, so 2 times 12 times 5, so that's 120. So we have 120 plus 10 dy dt equals 0. All right, so then this is the last part. We substituted all the values and now we solve it. Okay, so let's subtract the 120. So we have 10 dy dt equals a negative 120. So then that means dy dt equals a negative 12 feet per second. Well, that answer makes sense because if I'm pulling this ladder out, the top of this ladder is falling down. So that's what the negative is for. So there we go. There's our first related rate of change problem. And in this problem, uh, we were able to set up uh, a picture of what was going on. We created our, where we figured out the equation that relates everything. We took the derivative with respect to time. We figured out our values. We had to do a little side work to get one of the values. And then we substituted in our values and we got the rate that the top of this ladder is being pulled down as the ladder is being pulled away. I guess one thing to note is please remember that if this whole situation changes at all, like if the question is, oh, well, if we're pulling it out at five feet per second, um, how fast is the top of the ladder moving down when it's seven feet away from the wall? Uh, that changes the whole problem. So you do have to go back to this step and substitute all the new information in. Um, but if it does ask you a series of those, you know, from seven, nine, 12, whatever they do, then it's not too bad. Once you get this equation here, then the rest is just solving it.